father is Armenian. My mother is Arab from Nazareth. I am proud of being partly Armenian because of their renowned attributes, but my poetry flows from the symbols of Arabia. With these words, Habib Avedisian, the Jordanian artist, introduces himself. Habib Avedisian now lives in Jabal Ashrafiya in Amman. He was born in Jerusalem in 1942 and came to Amman in 1948 with the first influx of Palestinian refugees. He received his education in Bejala, Beirut, and later in London, where he studied art. In 1975, after studying art in London, Habib Abdisian came back to Jordan and started practicing his profession as an artist. Everyone wants to understand art, and no one tries to understand the song of a bird. The problem in art is one of translation. All art is at once surface and symbol. One has to wander beneath the surface. Style is often something that locks the artist into the same vision for years, even for a lifetime and he might become sterile, although there are great painters with style. Nevertheless, I would prefer not to have a style. There is the material, there are implements and media, there are the color attributes, tones, shades and hues. There are millions of notes to hit, but there is no technique. Do we know why two colors sing when put side by side? One can never learn how to paint through a lexicon. confuse those who come to know Habib Avadisyan. One, his quiet character. Two, the strangeness, so to speak, of his paintings. Strange paintings they are indeed, yet one cannot but admire them. If not for their original spirit, then for the deep rapport. Habib's paintings dwell on mythology and often radiate spiritual longings. They breathe the air of long forgotten histories, from which Habib draws mood, character, and atmosphere. For Habib, a painting could be a myth, a short story, or a poem. 
It could also be all these things together. is born deep within us. It has been so with the cave dwellers whereby their uh, necessity was magic and survival. It has been so with the Egyptian whereby the spirit of the ruling system prescribed the gigantic monuments to commemorate eternity. It was so with the ziggurat of Babylon, and it is now with the modern man, whereby his necessity is more psychical and universal than ever before. Art is often described as a mirror through which the needs, social values, feelings, and thoughts of a nation are reflected. Historians have thus acknowledged that the artist is the best recorder of time. The role of an artist in society is a notion that fascinates Habib Avadisyan. Most of the remains of extinct civilizations is but the performance of the artist in his endeavor to continually create new values. Since I believe the artist's dignity lies in his duty to keep awake the sense of wonder in the world. Some people talk about chaos and that nature is chaotic and that the artist puts order into it. This is absurd as nature is in perfect order since it is the creation of the great architect. All what we can hope for is to put some order into ourselves. Whatever is born genuinely by nature and moves the human spirit is realism. Even if there, is, there are no images of people, houses and trees, as truth and validity are not determined by the shape of the elements, but by their interplay. What we impose upon ourselves does not emanate from us. Therefore, it is not truth. What counts is what comes out spontaneously and impulsively out of an inner urging necessity. Habib's paintings communicate on a new channel, a channel where things get mixed up together and thus achieve a wider artistic dimension. Silence is Habib's most eloquent expression. Color is his domain and his outspoken friend even in the hours of silence.
Habib, I have seen you painting in the studio, and uh, it seemed to me that you were just throwing your paint in just like that with no preconception of what you were doing or what the painting should come out to be. So I just want uh, an explanation from you. Well, the thought is uh, to paint and not what to paint. The idea is not uh, thought of or settled beforehand. It changes as it is done, as one thoughts change. The canvas to me is like a crystal ball wherein I throw my paint and see what sort of magic takes place. Habib, uh, if I walk uh, into an exhibition of yours and I see all these, uh, allow me to call them framed colors, I would not know what to do. I would be antagonized by looking at these paintings because I wouldn't know whether to like them or dislike them, how to react to them, what to look for. So how could you explain to me this uh, feeling? Well, I would say that uh, no generation or individual is interested in the art in, this, in, in quite the same way as any other. Uh, each generation and each individual brings to the contemplation of art its own categories of appreciation, makes its own demands upon art, and has its own use of it. Every man's work, whether be it in literature or music, pictures or architecture, is but a portrait of himself. We can pick up anything which is good for us, anywhere we can find it. If we have a temperament, it will definitely appear into our imitation. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder and not according to a set of dogmas. It is beyond any canon. Everyone is a genius at least once a year. The only difference with the real genius is that the latter has his bright ideas put close together. We should, however, beware of notions such as genius and inspiration. They are a sort of a magic wand that should be used sparingly if one wants to see through clearly. In the meantime, all one has to do is work. Habib, you don't give any names or any titles to your paintings, and uh, there must be a philosophy behind this. Uh, could you share with us this philosophy? I concentrate on the formal elements of art, its color, its shape or form, its texture in their pure state. My aim is to obtain a harmonious aesthetic unity. The objective of my compositions is to attain a direct visual appeal, unspoiled by the non-artistic associations of religious 
historical or literary subjects. And if I ever use a recognizable figure, I would use it to me a symbol, which is evocative rather than descriptive. For this reason, I refrained from giving my paintings titles or names <clears throat> that will uh, surely disturb the viewer's freedom of selection, enchain his thoughts with a definite title or name, and forbid him to dream his dreams. I give my paintings numbers which are more appropriate to their non-representational nature. I leave thus the viewer with various gates to fantasy. As Dr. Carl Jung said of numbers, that they are the tangible connection between the spheres of matter and psyche. The complete series of an artist's work is but the one story of his life. It is a continuum and I think it is unfair to dissect this complete process into dated episodes. What is the date in comparison to the age of life anyway? It is so minimal. Nevertheless, I do not mind putting dates on my paintings, for I am not for theories, but for the spirit. Art is mostly associated with emotions and feelings. Whenever we speak of an artist, we rarely speak of his mind and intellect, but we always speak of his emotions, his inner anxieties, and his feelings portrayed in any work he does or he creates. The question here is, does intellect have anything to do with the artistic process? And if it does, where does it fall? The utter joy of the artist is when his intellect and his feelings merge and fuse into one another. And when the wholeness of man is at work, it is then that the creative process is complete. Habib, your paintings fall under the label modern art but a lot of people would consider modern art as not worthwhile too much thinking on too much consideration because it is devoid of tradition. So how would you uh, compromise between modern art and tradition? Modern art has attained a profound break with the past. New values have emerged and old values have changed. But most people regard new values with hostility. Although the new values are not as important as the spirit it reveals. Surely art without tradition is like a flock of sheep without a shepherd, but without innovation it is merely a corpse. Habib, in relation to art, what does freedom imply to you? Well, one must be very careful with that, since the freedom not to do one thing requires you to do something else imperatively. However, art, like life, should be free because they are both experimental and one cannot experiment with the canon as a guide.
There are days when solitude is an intoxicating freedom and days when it is a poison that makes you knock your head on the wall. I believe, however, that it is in solitude that the work of hand, mind, and heart is conceived. Art is a timeless, borderless process. It changes up and down, but it never improves as technology and medicine improve. There is no such thing as figurative and non-figurative art. Everything appears to us in the guise of a figure. Otherwise, we cannot see it. Success is dangerous. One begins to copy oneself, and that may lead to sterility. However, success is important, as most people appreciate a work of art in relation to its success. Uh, some people believe that uh, artists are those mysterious-looking persons who always live aloof, who live in alienation from others, in some sort of a solitary ivory towers. Uh, do you agree with that? Well, I think that the artist needs people, as the picture only lives through the person who is looking at it. I would like also to quote the great Robert Frost saying, Before I build a wall, I would want to ask what I was walling in or walling out. Mm -hmm.